Welcome to week three of Intro to Chicana Chicano Studies. In week three, we will focus on the civilizations of Mesopotamia, the origins of colonization, a Mexico timeline, and the Mexican-American War. Here are your week three critical vocabulary words. Make sure that you are keeping track of your vocabulary words in a chart, the way that I explained last week. You will be using these vocabulary words for your quiz and also as you write your discussion polls and your journal reflections, you're going to need to start integrating new vocabulary into your writing. So please pay close attention to the following vocabulary words and add them to your critical vocabulary chart. When we talk about Mesoamerica, we're talking about a large portion of land that stems from the Southern United States, all of Mexico into um, Central America, Honduras, Nicaragua, um, and even in other parts of um, El Salvador, Guatemala, Belize, all of these different places where civilizations of Aztec, of Maya, of Olmec flourished before Columbus arrived to this hemisphere of the world. And their sheer size, the structure of their buildings, what we know of these civilizations prove that these people were advanced technologically. Um, and it's amazing. And it's also very frustrating to think of what might this world, especially North America, Central America, South America, Mexico, what this world would have been like if they would have never been conquered and destroyed and damaged by um, the Spanish, uh, the Spaniards, and also in um, uh, uh, South America, uh, the Portuguese as well, explorers and conquistadors. The Olmec were an early Mesoamerican civilization centered in the Veracruz region of Southeast Mexico that flourished between 1300 and 400 BCE, which is before our common era. And their cultural influence was widespread throughout Mexico and Central America. The culture of the Olmec is characterized by a highly advanced and developed system of agriculture by jade carvings and sculptures in the form of these giant heads that we commonly see. Um, it is interesting to note that many people believe that African people had actually sailed across the ocean and had intermixed with the indigenous people of this region and influenced some of these carvings. And that is why you will see some of the features of the Olmec statues, um, very similar to African features as well. And it's really important that you explore this history for the uh, possibility and notion of Africans arriving in these areas before Columbus. And we will explore more of that in the future. We must always respect and honor the Maya. A Mesoamerican people that inhabited Southeast Mexico, Guatemala, and Belize. Their civilizations reached their height around Common Era, 300 to 900. And as you can see from these pictures, they're noted for their amazing structures and the technology that was required to organize and plan cities that were unparalleled at the time. Um, and very other few places in the world had this type of advancement um, at the time that they flourished. Uh, the Maya are also credited for their mathematics, their intelligence and brilliance with the development of the calendar, knowledge of the stars, astronomy, and their hieroglyphic writing system. So the beautiful and uh, brilliantly detailed artwork that came about at that time period. The Aztec people, who originated as a nomadic, meaning a traveling tribe in northern Mexico, arrived in Mesoamerica around the beginning of the 13th century 
um, from their magnificent capital city, Tenochtitlan, which we will see a little video of shortly. They emerged as a dominant force in central Mexico. Um, and they had powerful social, political, religious, and commercial organizations that brought many of the region's city-states under their control by the 15th century. So I wish we could go more in depth of Aztec history and you can certainly take a course that will help you explore that fully. But there is no denying of the power of the Aztec people and their civilization and their contributions to world and to the world history. Tenochtitlan, which is an incomparable example of intelligence, of brilliance, of the people's power to create a civilization unlike any other on the face of the earth in about 1325. And I hope many of you have looked at or seen artist renditions or pictures of what this grand, amazing place looked like um, before it was ultimately conquered, right? But um, built in the middle of a lake as an island with incredible uh, organization of buildings, of temples, of aqueducts, of fields for growing food, of city structures where people lived and worshiped and carried out wars. And this example of the advancement of the Aztec people is unlike anything else that you would see on earth. And we are going to watch a video that gives a little bit more insight as to what the glory of Tenochtitlan really was like. Tenochtitlan was the capital of the Aztec Empire in Mesoamerica. The city was founded in the first half of the 14th century on one of the islands of Lake Texcoco in the Valley of Mexico. Tenochtitlan became fully developed as a city by the beginning of the 15th century. Most of the buildings of that era were constructed from stone. As the city was growing, a part of the lake was drained and the original size of the island was increased. Artificial islands made from mud and a canal system lent the Aztec capital a unique appearance. The area of the city was over 10 square kilometers and its population numbered approximately 200,000. The temple district with the most important buildings in the city was located in the center of Tenochtitlan, surrounded by a stone wall. The most outstanding of the buildings was the Great Temple, which was 30 meters in height. There were two shrines at the top. The altars in front of these were used for ritual sacrifices, usually human sacrifices, which were offered to the god of the sun on one and to the god of the rain on the other. Located on the other side of the central district was the Tlachtli, the court for the Aztec ball game called Ulamalitzli or hip ball. The game often contained ritual elements and often featured human sacrifice. Next to this field was another morbid structure. The Tsompantli, or skull rack, was a rack with stakes, where the skulls of those defeated and sacrificed were kept. The city was also supplied with drinking water and public sanitation. Eventually, however, even this magnificent city could not avoid its fate. In 1521, Tenochtitlan was conquered by the Spanish led by the conquistador Hernando Cortes, who had arrived on the Yucatan Peninsula in 1519. The magnificent Aztec buildings were destroyed, and in the 18th century, the lake was completely drained or filled. Today, where Tenochtitlan once stood, we find one of the largest cities in the world, Mexico City. Defining conquistador as a Spanish or Portuguese conqueror of Mexico, Central America, or South America. 
um, a soldier who defeated the people in the lands of the Americas and took their land for Spain or Portugal through brutal and evil and cruel means, uh, rape, pillaging, diseases, torture, murder of the indigenous people of these lands for the name of Spain and Portugal. Colonization is the process of assuming control either by war, by conquer, by force, genocide, slavery, intimidation, etc., of someone else's territory and applying one's own systems of law, government, and religion. And in terms of this course, we think of colonization by Spain, by Portugal, by other European nations over lands which were not theirs. I would love for you to consider this process by thinking about how would you feel if somebody showed up at your door tonight and told you to get out or you and your family would be murdered, tortured, or forced out. Would you not fight back? Well, that's precisely what happened when Europeans came to this hemisphere of the earth and started claiming lands as their own. They had to contend with the people who lived there. And oftentimes the people who lived in these lands were depicted as savages for fighting back to protect their land. But I ask you to consider would you not do the same thing? As I mentioned last week, every one of you should be adding to a critical vocabulary chart on a weekly basis. Every week, we will share new terms, concepts, and themes that need to be added to your chart so that, number one, it will help support you in your understanding and comprehension of the different topics that we cover throughout the course. And also these words show up on your quizzes that you will have four of during the course of this semester. And also these um, vocabulary words will be present on your final that will take place at the end of the semester. You can use your critical vocabulary chart on any of the quizzes on the final as well while you are writing your reflections or your discussion posts. It's amazing when you're able to start integrating these new terms into your writing. And also you will be submitting your critical vocabulary chart at the very end of the semester. And I got a good question that came through as an email as to, well, how do I know if I'm writing down the right definitions? Well, I provide a definition for you. And then in this chart, what you are doing is writing your own interpretation of the definition that I provide. Or you can look up the definition and then put it in your own words, okay? So this is not about you copying and pasting the definition that you find online or the definition that I provide you word for word. This is about you processing understandings of these terminologies through your own lens, through your own brain, right? And writing it down in your own words. So don't worry about, oh, am I going to get it right or wrong at the end of the semester? As long as you are actually making an attempt to process the definition through your own mind, then you'll be all right, okay? And the other important thing about your critical vocabulary chart is that you include an image so that it sticks in your brain in a really powerful and important way. So I hope that this makes sense. And I hope that each one of you has already started creating your vocabulary chart. Um, again, you can do it as a Microsoft Word document. You can do it as a Google document. And just keep track of the new words every single week. They will be provided to you in your weekly videos that I create for you. Email me if you have any questions about this. Here are your week three readings. The first reading is chapter one of a text called Occupied America. It's located in module three. 
Now, I actually downloaded the entire text for you, so you wouldn't have to buy the book. But I also kind of broke it down chapter by chapter as a PDF. We're not going to read the entire book, but just from time to time, we will read different chapters. So the first chapter is not just pyramids, explorers, and heroes. So make sure that you read chapter one from Occupied America. It's provided for you in module three. Your next reading is Mesoamerican Civilization, Seven Defining Characteristics Throughout History. And your third reading this week is a Mexico Timeline. Every week, I will provide you with essential questions that help you guide you while you're reading, right? What are the main things that you should be taking away while you're reading the chapters and the articles that I provide for you? So for chapter one, not just pyramids, explorers, and heroes, the things that you should be thinking about while you're reading so that you take away the key themes are what are the major stages of development in the evolution of Mesoamerican civilizations? Number two, what was the impact and the importance of corn? What are the highlights of agricultural innovations, urban centers, architecture, calendars, and mathematical and literary achievements? And what were the changes in the development of classes and gender differences as the populations grew from villages to chiefdoms to urban centers and traced the evolving modes of production? So again, while you're reading chapter one, these are the key questions that you should be seeking to answer as you explore the powerful history of Mesoamerican civilizations and the ancestors of many of you in this class. In the article, Mesoamerican Civilization, Seven Defining Characteristics Throughout History, which has a link that you will also find in module three readings. Your essential questions for this article are, what characteristics and inventions identify Mesoamerican civilizations as highly advanced? Which characteristics of Mesoamerican civilization were the most interesting to you and why? So this is what you're thinking about while you read the article. Your third article for the week is a Mexico timeline. Your questions for this article are, what circumstances led to the war between Mexico and America in 1846? What were the results of the war? How did it impact Mexico and its people? What were the determining events between 1800 and the present that led to Mexico's relationship with America today? You have several videos to watch during week three that are really powerful, engaging, informative, um, and, and meaningful to the history of Mexico and to the ancestors of uh, people who come from these areas. So your videos for this week are the rise of the Aztecs, which has beautiful uh, graphics and images, Tenochtitlan, the jewel of Mesoamerica and Aztec history, the European conquest of America, a summary on a map, and Aztecs, Arrival of Cortes and the Conquistadors. Thank you for watching your week three video. I hope everybody has a fantastic week. As always, reach out to me if you have any questions, and I look forward to seeing you again next week in week four. Take care, everybody. Peace.